Hey YouTube, this is Mr. Penguino and we're playing more Asagao Academy. Uh, let me check to make sure everything's recording. That's recording, that's recording, that's recording, that's recording. I may have broken the game. Nope, didn't do it. I didn't break it. I am the best. Uh, so we've been accused of stealing the boots. I couldn't have stolen the boots. I was busy helping people the whole time. <laughs> Spit everywhere. Um, Mine and I face each other in a stairwell, hearts pumping fast. Where, why, I don't remember what's happening exactly. I took a deep breath. There was nothing for it. We'd have to face them eventually. Might as well be now. Yeah, let's do this. Together we stepped into the hallway. Immediately ahead of us, Jared and PBG were grouped around the locker, whispering to each other with dark looks. Hey guys. Oh, this face. Like this was expected, sad puppy dog, but oh my God, this just sheer panic. Oh, it's the best. Uh, <laughs> we're priceless. Yes. Uh, uh, we approached them. So far, so good. They hadn't run. Oh, um, um, how are you two doing this fine day? Swell. We're, we're swell. I winced. My voice was so high pitched, even I was hurting from it. <laughs> My elbow jared in the side with a casual chuckle. Ready for that quiz? Hmm. Jared's not. Yeah, he's not in our class. I don't know why Mai would think he would be ready for the quiz that we have. PBG's in our class. That would have been the person to ask. I'm, I meant PBG. I was talking to him. So are you? Uh. uh it's his only line this entire scene. Just glanced around him in desperation, finally locking eyes with Jared and plea for help. Oops, I have to go now. I was supposed to meet a person at my locker for some ladles. Ladles? PBG grabbed Jared's arm, clinging for dear life. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Jared ripped his arms away and dashed up the stairs. Oh, damn, no wonder he was so popular. He could probably meddle and track with legs like those. Turning to face PBG, I smiled brightly. PBG was always friendly. He always considered others' feelings. He would probably be okay with us. Well, uh, ready for class? PBG glanced from the books in his hands to his locker. Uh, yeah, I uh, forgot that I also needed... He walked away. I can't believe They this. just left? What the heck was that? It's a little much to assume things would just go normal right away. It's not that things would go normal, but uh, things go to normal. Back to normal? Just go to normal. But I, but couldn't there have been a little decency? A little, a little, 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 little decency. Oh. They were acting like we were glittering vampires or something. I wanted to console her to say something encouraging, but my mind was completely blank. Instead of thoughts, a feeling pounded its way through my skull down to my heart. Betrayal. I thought we were friends. <laughs> this sucks. I was so close to Jared, closer than I've ever been before, and now he's further away than ever. It's not even because I freaked him out. I thought he would, he would have. <sighs> Come on, let's just go to class. Maybe if we keep our heads down, lunch will be better. Class that morning wasn't fun. When I first entered the room, I nodded at them, trying to declare my friendship in some way. PBG and John wouldn't even look at me. Their backs remained fully turned to the, turned to the entire class. But one person did look our way. Boy, did he look. Each time his gaze strayed to our side of the room, it was filled with venom. Yeah, because venom's a po uh, venom is the attacking poison. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, neither I nor Mai could handle it. We kept our heads low and did our work. I had no idea what Shane's what was Shane's deal. He was acting like we murdered a batch of baby seals or told him digestives were nasty. Digestives are fantastic. Uh, there was nothing we, we could do but wait for time to pass. When the bell for lunch finally rang, we hung back a bit and tried to decide what to do. It's not as if we can avoid the entire cafeteria. I didn't bring my lunch today. More importantly, I don't want to run away. What the hell? This whole thing is stupid. We've done nothing wrong. There's no real reason that we're treated like murderers or people who use ad block. <laughs> Look, let's just go to lunch. We'll pretend everything is normal, and if that doesn't work out, if that doesn't work out, then, well, we'll see what then. Now is how Mai and I ended up standing in the middle of the cafeteria. Our trays piled with spaghetti and cheesecake. Oh, that sounds fantastic. There were seats open at the normal booth table. They hadn't bothered to block them off. We stared doubtfully at their in their direction. Sash looked up. He smiles at us. It was like hearing music for the first time. I forgot I was doing Satch's route. I thought we were just doing more startup stuff. 
But it's definitely, definitely a thing going on here. I realized we hadn't seen a friendly look all day. I began just a little to hope. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe they won't mind. Uh, let's give it a go, shall we? We head for the table. One step, two steps, three steps. They weren't moving. We were almost to the table. It looked like... Then bodies shifted. Books and feet came out of nowhere, and suddenly there weren't any free seats. Um... Um... We stared at them, unable to believe our eyes. They looked way sheepishly. It almost seemed premeditated. I couldn't tell whether they chose to do it this way to hurt our feelings, or if they just hadn't realized we were still trying to make things right. Oh, Sorry, Hana. My... It's just... We've got a lot to think about right now. Official club business, you know? Hmm. Privacy would be nice. Of course. I turned, I turned, about to walk away, when I thought better of it. If things were going to go on like this, maybe it was better if we did just get it over with in one blow. If we were keep trying to... if Why keep trying if they weren't going to give us a chance? So, does this mean we won't be able to sit with you guys anymore? A look of alarm passed across Satch's face. He opened his mouth to protest, but... Uh, I think I think we have best if we had some time to figure things out. I hung my head. I didn't want to look at them anymore. Maya and I turned from the table as we walked away. The looks on our faces made plain what happened to the rest of the students. Hushed whispers rippled through the cafeteria. They got kicked out. Did something happen? Just trying to be as loud as possible compared to everything else. I knew it couldn't last. As we continued across the cafeteria, something clattered to the right of us. A spoon was on the table, having fallen out of Luke's mouth. Ian grimaced and looked away. Even the hidden plot club was aghast! Oh, oh no! Uh, even they didn't want to have anything to do with us. I frantically searched their faces, looking for some sign of warmth, but... A hand clamped around my shoulder, jostling me out of my thoughts. You call yourselves friends? I was yelling. She turned around and was all out yelling at the Normal Boots Club. The men of the Normal Boots stared at their food. I can't believe any of- I can't- blah, blah. I can't believe you! Any of you! I thought you were better than this! She looked around directly at Jared. Her hand tightened on my arm so much that it hurt. I can't believe this. I thought you were all better than this. If this is how you treat your friends, we don't want any part of it. Tears rolled down my face. Horrified, I reached up to wipe them and nearly dropped my tray on the floor. I don't want to be there anymore. Come on, Hana. She jerked away from our tables and away from the whispering herds of students, away from our so-called friends. Just before we left the cafeteria, Mai faltered. <laughs> I really thought you were better than that. And we left. Damn. Damn. Mai does this. She just chews everybody out. Whenever someone's doing something wrong, you can be certain that Mai will let them know that they're just being assholes. It's fantastic. Mai's great. Uh, we arrived at the classroom. Neither of us actively chose it, but it was completely empty. It would do. We sat automatically at our regular desks. I turned my chair around to face Mai, this time tilting it a bit further to block the opposite side of the room from view. I was still crying. No matter how hard I tried, the tears wouldn't stop coming. I hated it. I hated feeling so stupid and emotional. It would be so much better if I could be like Mai and get angry. Make it seem like it didn't affect me at all. But it did affect me. It really did. I would, I would say that Mai's reaction is just as emotional and just as, like, affected. It's just a different emotional response. It's, it's, she's yelling at them instead of crying. She's directing it outward. She's got that, that external locus of control. Uh, but it did affect me. It really did. So much so that Mai had to come to my rescue in front of everybody. At least I had her. She could have tried to distance herself from me to make herself look better, but she didn't. Where would I be without her? We ate in silence. The spaghetti I had, an American special, tasted like plastic. Okay. Mai shifted in front of me, drumming her hands against the top of her desk. In fact, she wasn't eating much at all. She pushed her food around her plate, glancing up now and then to look out at the cloudy skies. Finally, she noticed me watching her. Anna. Anna. Something about the tone of her voice worried me. I set down my fork. I have something to tell you. Oh my god, she did. She stole the boots. I swear to god. Mai, if you tell me that you stole the boots, if you say that, oh, oh, oh! Uh, it's never gone well when I told people in the past. I didn't, I didn't want that to happen here too. <laughs> Mai, we're friends. You've unquestioningly had my back this entire time. You deserve the same in return. I smiled at her and she sheepishly glanced away. 
Yeah, well, I'm a... Mm, she swallowed. I have kleptomania. I stared at her. Then something clicked into place. <gasps> oh, despite my best efforts, my surprise slipped through. Mai stared at me, her eyes wide with emotion I rarely saw in her. Fear. I smiled again, hoping to calm her. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? That's no big deal. I isn't it? I was so happy when you told me you trusted and I didn't take the boots. Please believe me, so I would never take something so important. I definitely not from my friends. I mean, I have before, but I really try not to. I can't control myself, but if I, but I try not to, and I didn't this time. Please. Wow. Wow. That's that's pretty hardcore. Uh, kleptomania. I never heard it discussed as more than a joke. A terrible justification for something another person did. It was the compulsion to steal, wasn't it? Usually people were too ashamed to admit they took anything. I think. So Mai wouldn't have told me this if she really took the boots. Would she? Was she just easing her conscience? That would explain why she got so defensive when I asked her whether she took them. But it would also explain why she defended me so viscerally, because she felt responsible for what I was suffering through. But she wouldn't take anything from people she cared about. Wait. Wait. My turby pen. It was in her desk. I thought it was just misplaced, but she took it. Uh, you won't tell anyone, right? Mai trusted me enough to tell me what she was dealing with, and she was my friend. She never did me any harm. Well, not intentionally. I should keep her secret on principle. Friends do that for their friends, but... What if she really did take the boots? What if this was her way of asking for help? Even if she didn't, shouldn't Satch at least know about this? He was investigating the situation out of the kindness of his heart. He could use all this to help, all the help he could get. Wouldn't he need to know this? Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep a secret. They don't, they don't need to know. At least definitely not, like, right away or anything. No, Mai was my friend. If she wanted to tell Sash, that was her business, not mine. I won't tell anyone unless you want me to. Hana. Hana. Thank you. Mai hurled her... Thank you. There we go. That was the right tone. Uh, Mai hurled herself around the desk and into my arms. <gasps> Whoa, no, no problem. No, really. Thank you. I know things look bad now, but we're on each other's side. As long as we can rely on each other, nothing else matters. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're you're right. You're right? When you're right, you're right. Uh, as the clock neared the end of lunch, Mai stood up and took my tray. I'll take these back. Oh, thank you. No problem. She left her footsteps a calmly measured march. She seemed to be feeling better. Maybe everything would work out? I hope so. One by one, students filtered into the classroom. I kept my eyes on my desk, running across the grooves in the worn wood. What would it feel like to run my hands across it? I wanted to find out, but I was too afraid to move. Hana. I flinched at the sound of my own name on another student's lips. I forgot what Mimi's voice is. The heat of several pairs of eyes lay thick on my face like a ray of sunlight. I didn't want to look at them. I couldn't look at them. The grooves on my desk were really very interesting, looping and swirling around. This is exactly the OCD that occurs in... Uh, the later books of the Ender's Game series, the, the, the Speaker for the Dead series. Yeah, that's what they're called. Uh, so that's really, it's really obscure. Uh, if it were, if it were a canyon, I'd fly a plane through it. They probably weren't looking at me. In all likelihood, I was imagining all of this. Yeah, yeah, how stupid of me. If I were the, as if I were the center of the world. Silly Hana. She stole, but she looks so docile. Who the hell is Kakusu? That name has never come up before. This was way too familiar. Suddenly I felt lightheaded as if my mind was no longer tethered to my body. Instead I was floating up to the ceiling of the room. The place people feel when they roll their eyes in the back of their head. Whoa, whoa, did I just pass out? A familiar scene played out before me. You're so selfish, you think you're better than us? No? Look at this girl, who does she think she is? Say something! <gasps> Ow! I was cowering on the floor beside my desk. It was after school. I'd come into the classroom to get a textbook I'd forgotten and run into three girls. Three girls who used to be my friends. You copied off my test, didn't you? No. No, I didn't. Why would I? How did you get to be the top of the class then? How did you manage to catch Nami's boyfriend, eh? You must have been sleeping or you've been sleeping around, haven't you? No, I haven't. You guys know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Liar. No wonder, too, her mother wasn't around to teach her proper manners. Ha! I bet her mom taught her how to sleep around. Haven't you seen her father? Ah! 
I was standing. The book I threw lay on the opposite side of the classroom, not only having ducked to avoid it. For an instant, they looked up at me in fear. Then Melissa started laughing. <laughs> oh, wow, you're right. A bastard child from a bastard family. She'll never amount to much. But I feel so threatened now. I think I'll tell the principal what happened. No, wait. I'm sorry. Please don't. I... You don't mind cleaning up for us, then? We could have cleaned the classroom because an we couldn't clean the classroom because another student attacked us. We were all such good friends. Why would we lie about this? I moved to the utility closet at the back of the room and grabbed a broom. That a girl. Guess she learned something from her mother after all. Jesus, that's a lot of yelling about my mom, who's dead, probably. Shit. I have a mouth to respond only for my teeth to start chattering. Class. Okay, class. Today we're going to. I raise my hand. Hana, what is it? But bathroom emergency, please. All right, but be quick about it. I headed for the door, feeling as though I was moving through ether. The three familiar green jackets didn't move a muscle as I shut it behind me. The hallway passed before me in a blur. Shit, this is new. This is just an intense heartbeat sound. All I could hear was the sound of my own breathing and the blood pounding in my head. I reached the restroom. A quick glance told me it was empty. All stall doors open. I picked one and rushed in, slamming the door and closing the lid of the toilet. Then I sat, pulling my knees up to my chest. I hate this. Deep breaths, Hana. Deep breaths. Calm down. You're in a bathroom. You're at Asagel. Look at your uniform's different. The door's locked. No one's going to crawl under, under it like last time. What the fuck? Is this something like out of the ring? You're safe. Calm down. Deep breaths. As I breathed, my eyes wandered across the sterile gray tile and thick metal walls separating the stalls. This is so nice. I live in the United States where stalls are not private rooms. It really did look different from my old school. There wasn't even graffiti on the backs of the doors. How in the world would Terry let people know she and Bobby would be together forever now? <laughs> I giggled. Pull yourself together, Hana. This isn't the end of the world. Sure, things are bad, but... You're my best friend. You're my best friend. Your score. That's incredible. No, the Hana I know would never hurt another person. I've already changed, but I'm still so... So... <laughs> Uh, what am I even doing here? Crying in a bathroom stall because people were whispering about me? Mm -hmm. Get a hold of yourself, Hana. Grow up. Do you want to be? Do you want this to be it for the rest of your life? Every time someone is even the slightest bit mean to you, you run and hide, start crying, and look for someone to take a fall in your stead. <sighs> what are you doing with yourself? This can't. This won't be my future. I unlocked and pushed the door open to the bathroom stall. My face, tear stained and pink, stared back at me from the mirror. I'm going to change. From now on, I'm taking matters in my own hands. I will find the boots. I will clear my name. Mize, too. <laughs> and I'll find the missing books for Satch. He's been so kind to me, and I've been letting him take everything upon himself. But what? who does he have when things go bad? I want to be someone people can lean on. I want to be someone, pe someone who can actually help other people. I raised my face in the sink and dabbed it with a rough paper towel. It's time that things change. I walked back to the classroom, shoulders square and eyes staring straight ahead. Shizuka paused her lecture, waiting for me to take my seat. This time I could see the other students' heads turning, following my movement across the classroom. I ignored them. When I sat, Shizuka began teaching again, a slight smile on her face. When her back was turned, Mai tapped my shoulder. Um, Are you okay? I turned to face her. Yeah. Better than ever! She smiled, but, I watched, but she watched me for a few seconds. I tried to put as much of my resolve in my eyes as I could. I could do this! Finally, she nodded and, turned to, and I turned to my classwork. First, I had to get through class. After that, the library. Be strong, Hana. I entered the library. Slightly damp smell of old books and little sunlight tugging at my clothes. Okay, so this episode was a little short, but I feel like we got a lot of a lot of plot in this chunk of episode. So it's a little bit short, but maybe the next one will be a little bit long to balance it out. I'm not sure how the scenes work. Actually, let's let's decide based on that. We're at conviction. Go to extras, scene picker, uh, satch. Conviction. Whoa, we're halfway through chapter two already, which is a super good sign, right? We did one, two, three, four, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do, let's do, wait, one, two, three, four, 
five and one, two, three, four. I know how to do math. It would be five and six instead of four and seven. You can take one away from the other one and add it. We're gonna do one more. We're gonna do one more, one more section. I lied. Uh, by asking clumps of students with their heads hung over homework, I went straight to the front desk. Satch stood behind it, searching frantically for something in the piles of papers stacked along the back wall. He kept shaking his head and pausing, almost as if he were muttering to himself, running his hands over his hair. It was odd. He looked really stressed. That wasn't normal for him. I almost didn't want to interrupt, but I came here for a reason. Excuse me? He jumped slightly. Hana. Oh, Hana. How can I help you? When he smiled, it almost seemed as if nothing was wrong, even though that clearly wasn't the case. But the strangest thing about was that smile didn't seem disingenuous. He was truly smiling, happy or content about something. Satch would never ask for help, even if he needed it. Are you all right? You didn't seem very well. Satch glanced around him before replying in a low whisper. More books have gone missing. Oh, mine's not due for another few weeks, so at least I'm not the one hurting you this time. My joke fell flat as a dead raccoon. Satch's face caved in and he stared at the counter in front of him. It's... it's not looking good for me. What? What? What do you mean? He opened his mouth but didn't speak. After a pause, he began to chew his lip. Then something strange happened. He seemed to almost gather himself up. He took a deep breath, set his shoulders back, and smiled. Don't worry about it. It made my heart break. I wanted to crawl around the counter and give him a hug. I wanted to feel the weight of his head against my shoulder, something to help him unload the burdens he carried. But as I looked at his smile, I realized he didn't want me to. More than that, he didn't want me to. Maybe if I was Gerard or Paul, but not Hana. Not right now, at least. Maybe during the flower festival we were close enough to share some of our burdens, but now? Satch was struggling. He didn't trust me enough to let me see it. My heart dropped. My neck grew hot. How exactly am I supposed to not worry about it? He waved a hand as if swatting away a fly. I'll be fine. No, well, I had no doubt that you'd be fine on your own, but it was now or ever. Maybe he didn't want my help, but he still needed it. I paused for a second, trying to find the best way to word my intentions. Well. You're already trying to help me, and you have so much on your plate. The least I could do is help you find the missing books. Two heads are better than... Uh. No, really, that won't be necessary. Why not? Other people have are here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. I'm your friend. I want to help you, Satch. Satch looked at me skeptically. He really didn't trust me, did he? Mm. I'm not going to give up on this. Really, Hana, that's very kind of you, but he looked around him in desperation. I don't think that would be helpful. Please, just let me handle this. I've got everything under control, I swear. <laughs> but Satch glanced over his shoulder. I mean it. All right, be good. I've got to go back to work. I'll see you later. Satch stepped out from behind the counter and went into the back room. The librarian waited there, a certain, waited there, a certain look on her face. I turned and started back through the aisles of books. Now what? Thick aisles of books. I saw the word. I knew what it said. If someone really didn't want your help, wasn't it kind of bad to force yourself on them? But the question was, did he really not want my help? I was sure it wasn't because that he didn't want or need it. It was because, for all he said, or he said he believed I didn't take the boots. He didn't trust me. Not at all. As if telling me not to his help is going to do anything. He's got another thing coming if that's what he thinks. Mm. Sometimes people just don't know what's best for them. Of course, I was assuming I knew better than he did about what he wanted, but I had to do something. It wasn't just going to sit around and wait while he was in trouble. It's not looking good for me. Whatever that meant, I wanted to make sure he did it didn't start looking any worse. And there. I snipped the blade to my scissors shut and a small book-shaped cutout fell into my lap. I sat in, into its pile and rolled out my shoulders. Finally, four thick piles of multicolored construction paper sat neatly before me. My hands ached from cutting so much at once. I set scissors aside and grabbed my permanent marker that sat on my desk, along with the cloud-shaped decorations I made earlier. Hello. I forgot her name was Sasaki. Is it Sasaki? My Sasaki? Hey, Anna, I'm back! My, my face, flushed and cheery as usual, bounded into the room. Hey! How was practice? Mai went to practice for the Asagao Strikers almost every evening. Their first big game was coming up, but it was at another school, so I wouldn't be able to go see her play. It bothered me a lot, but I was slightly relieved to not have to witness the pyre-burning rage that was Mai playing volleyball. It was fine, but I totally struck Mimi in the... Uh, what's all this? Mai dropped her duffel bag in her chair, surveying the massive paper spread out along the floor with myself at the center. <laughs> I didn't know we had to do arts and crafts here. I'm making flyers. Actually, would you mind helping me? It'll take me another few hours by myself. Of course, what are they for? My, uh, she, she plopped herself on the floor and took up one of the stick figures I made. Some books have gone missing in the library, so I figured we could put up flyers reminding people to turn theirs in on time. 
Oh, missing books? I tossed a few sheets of paper at her feet, then uncapped a glue stick and started attaching the images. Yeah, they've been missing since a few weeks ago, but now it's getting worse. But one of the books was, uh, just, but well, one of the books was just one I forgot to turn in, so I figured maybe that happened with all the books. My spiraled the stick figure in her hand, so it looked like it was doing cartwheels. They can look up who has late books in the system, you know? Yeah. But maybe it'll help anyways. She grabbed a paper book and smeared glue all over the back. People do forget, so maybe half can be reminders, half can be lost and found notes. Yeah, okay. Together we worked through a pile of papers each. We compared handwriting and greeted to see who would make the nicest flyer. I won, of course. It reminded me of kindergarten, it was oddly comforting. We ran out of images of books, and I was just handing Maya a permanent marker to start drawing them when she slapped her leg with the back of her hand. Um, oh, shoot! I totally forgot, I left something at the gym, I should go get it! Okay, hurry back. Yeah, no problem! Odd, it wasn't like Maya to forget something. Usually she only forgot something when she wanted to copy my homework. As I started on the third pile, I began to feel distinctly sad. Why? My hand's still on the paper, memory stirring in my mind. Back at Amaradisu, my parents ran a shop together. My dad created beautiful works of art, pottery, and ceramics. My mom filled them with flowers she grew. He tried to teach me how to make pots, but I never could do it. I could never do it. I got too nervous seeing how easily one mistake could completely alter what you were making. Instead, one day he came to my room with a pile of papers. He folded them, and in seconds, a blue morning glory appeared in front of my eyes. <gasps> how did you do that? Smiling, he handed me a purple paper and taught me how to fold a morning glory step by step. When I finished, we sat them side by side. Mine was crumpled and stunted next to his crisp, beautiful creation. But he laughed. Separate, neither would be considered beautiful. I blinked. In front of me sat a blue morning glory, the cover of a book sticking out of one petal. The cover of a book sticking out of one petal. Yes, okay. Slowly, I made my way through the pile of flyers and then the next. The shadows grew longer and longer until they faded altogether. When I finally finished, it was after nine, and I still hadn't returned. Yeah. I'm done! I lay back on the floor exhausted and looked glance at the clock. I shouldn't have taken it shouldn't have taken her this long to get to the gym. Did she run into someone? I shouldn't wait up for her. I had to get up early. I cleaned up, changed my pajamas, and crawled in my soft, cool sheets. Without my snoring, the suit room seemed intensely still, like the silence was trying to press itself into my skull. I hope she's okay. The room blurred and I drifted off to sleep. Okay, now this is where we're gonna end the episode. We made two really quickly in quick succession sections, I think. So that's really cool. Uh, quickly, before anything else happens, my returns and the scene picker for Satch says we did missing book flyers. And now we're, now we're on my return. So I, uh, sure, we did like one, two more. We, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, next time, maybe we'll find out what mine was doing out late at night in the gym. Do you think she stole the books? She got really, really concerned when she, we were talking about trying to find the missing books. So what if Mai was like, shit, I've been found out, and she went to go return all the books she stole? Because that would fit the themes of this 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 route, but I don't I don't want her to have taken it. It would just fit because she didn't steal the boots. She had to have stolen something. Like it has to come up in more than just her background and like why they might why she might feel bad about being accused about the boots. So I don't know, we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll check you guys in the next video.